Good morning, welcome to Morning Outlook. This is Kim speaking on Monday the 6th of April. So starting the day, looking at the beginning of the week and I always sort of eye the weekly pivot up a little bit. It often gets hit quite early-ish in the week so uh, might, don't, don't want to discount that which is sitting above us at the moment. From this daily point of view though, um, the euro is pretty much in this sort of downward trend it would appear. Uh, for hourly picture you can still see the uh, trend lines I drew on last week. Um, that uh, channel effectively that we're sitting in at the moment you can see the weekly pivot above there consolidation where we sit here normally I would look at this consolidation and really look to sell back down maybe towards the 107 106 70 area um, it look like potential targets um, they go 107 uh, well 670 on here as well daily S1 there sitting below so they look like the potential targets just got to wait past this eight o'clock period I don't like the initial breakout sometimes there's a nice trend line going across the lows here if you draw it on um, looks like it's breaking at this stage but uh, it may just be a fake out sometimes it will go and won't stop well we will have missed that while I've missed that again if that's what happens but uh, just giving it a bit of patience at the moment as I say we do have the draw up here if it does turn around a little bit but my preference really is still to the downside following this trend but we'll uh, see how things shape up through this morning the pound the pound uh, well last week it, uh, it tightened up and eventually broke down um, went through its uh, daily eight finally finally softening then it had just held and held and held it tried chip tripping out the top but it found the easy the easy route down the bottom in the end and sold off through to the uh, four hourly 50 slightly beyond um where to this morning well the daily pivots uh, not too far it's just look at the weekly pivots not too far above here either it's just come down the chart so this daily pivot is just we've just air kissed it it's, uh, it's not the uh, black line that's actually shown for it because the calculations are out on the Monday just re check this and the ca the uh, pivot is around about 22.78 um, or something in that region um, weekly pivot though is correct at 123.15 or correct-ish so around about that 123.15 area for the weekly is where we set at the moment um, the way it's pulled up there you do wonder if it will push on a little bit better it has been the sort of stronger of the of the uh, two European majors here, the pound and the euro, um, it held up the best during the week. But um, well, we'll see how this uh, flags off this morning. <sighs> Part me in terms of this price action we're seeing here on the alleys would be rather be on the short side. But as I said, we're, we're pretty close to the daily. We're pretty close to that weekly pivot, um, and the majors come up there first, and either and perhaps. Pref Preferably the uh, second of those where it comes if it come, went back to the 50 area that would be my um, uh, preference for on the short side there. The dollar yen, dollar yen. Well, uh, this is looking like it wants to, and it's certainly through the Asian session it's pushing up back towards uh, the, the original range. I've left these drawings on here because it's quite important to where they were before the. Uh, um, volatility caused by the uh, coronavirus um, it's pitching up it's above its weekly pivot it's pitching up at the moment and looking like well it's got further upside to run at this stage now there is oh yeah just about still there's a bit of divergence running in there it looks like it may even want to be trying to break through that but um, and it, it's doing its best to look like it wants to break through there but there was a bit of divergence into that it's not a trade for me yet um, we'll be looking at this. I'm going to look at a cross pair here, the euro weight yen. Sometimes we just uh, it, it gives a, some nicer moves. It's a, and well, you see here, it's a lot cleaner actually. Um, it's not trying to push through at the moment. Got the nice divergence on there. So maybe on the short side, this uh, this might be the alternative to uh, trying to short the dollar yen. Um, if it sets and if it sets maybe breaking that 60 minute 8 um, sort of area or give me a reverse on the shorter time frames but the divergence a lot a lot cleaner okay a peach as someone's just put in on their trading room here till niche is back can't you okay Aussie dollar Aussie dollar been selling off late last week not to the same extent or movement that we saw in the um, euro there but still selling off 
Um, I, as I said at the beginning of the week, I was slightly more bullish and uh, I was looking at where, where the big money was going. The big money was going back into the Aussie and uh, well, we'll see how it is there when I do my analysis later in uh, this morning. But uh, <coughs> that hasn't stopped it uh, stepping its way down here, steps each time. Is it reversing here? Maybe. Uh, weekly pivots above, which could just draw it. Do I want to be selling it at the moment? Don't want to be doing really too much of it. It's a bit choppy, but if it was to start breaking down, maybe it's got further downside. Uh, but uh, this is my preference, well, I, I'll just leave that for now, as as I would with a Canadian dollar, and I haven't looked at it. Um, why? Because it's so often in this look, like, look, it's in a tight old range, chop all week last week on these dailies, but it still attracts people in because oh, they can't they can't leave it alone. But um, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not even talking about it anymore. There we go. I'll set my example there. We'll have a quick look at the euro pound, another pair, a cross pair that uh, we we look at during the during the day. There, it's uh, it's got more sense to look at this than the Canadian dollar. Um, pitched up on Friday there. It's just running, or just short of the weekly pivot maybe. No, it looks like it's caught the weekly pivot there. And bear flag that it's sitting there, sitting with at this stage. Um, it looked a moment ago like it was going to just roll over. And this is always the, the problem with the pre-8 o'clock. We just need to give it a bit of time and see what happens. We've now got another line for our trend line to run across uh, here. It has got the uh, daily pivot below, which... Uh, could be an, uh, an opportunity there, particularly if the pound. I mean, the thing to watch out for here: the pound has been looking a bit stronger at times and not moved down to the same extent the euro has, and we could see a continuation of this this move to the upside. So you just got to be a bit careful on this. Okay, um, I will look at oil. Apparently, the Russians and the uh, Saudis have been in talks. I'll just look at it on this 60 minute time frame and you see it's pitching back up there but uh, from what I can see at the moment at all, they're still squabbling over the cuts and it may be a bit of time before we see anything happen there but uh, I know some people have been wanting to get long on it in oil. You've got to be a bit careful how you play oil because um, I was just looking at uh, people are increasing the swaps, the cost of the swaps overnight quite significantly. Um, particularly if you were looking on the buy side so if you, even if you're looking to put a small position in and just leave it there you could be um, carved up by some of the costs of swaps so be be aware of that but uh, obviously say so obviously generally when oils come off quite so much uh, so far from a longer term point of view we often see it back towards that 50 60 point uh, dollar point and it does look attractive but just got to be careful what instruments you use maybe if you can get um some uh, future contracts uh, sitting in it. it may sit better but you'll find that the price of those there's always a, already a premium pricing into those um, okay that's oil uh, s and p's we've seen the um, equities in other markets pitching up this morning and the s and p's no example not being left the futures they're running up already uh, pushing up their higher low popped in there on the four alleys here um, it looks like it's brushed its weekly pivot so We'll see how this progresses, but it's had a, a good old run up towards the end of uh, last Friday's session there, after that session, and then pushing through this morning. Um, there we go, some uh, sm uh, lower uh, coronavirus uh, figures coming out for the likes of the state of New York, etc. Um, but uh, we'll see how this progresses. Technically, um, it it's, looks like it's turned the corner a little bit here on this uh, lower time frame, but... Uh, as I say, we'll see how that pushes through. That's it for me, uh, pretty much. Um, News-wise today, not that I was... Yeah, I mean, we looked at Friday's news. It, it created nothing, and it was the biggest change in non-farm payrolls ever um, and biggest miss. But uh, as I suspected, um, the, 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 these news events at the moment, they're hardly worth looking at. I mean, if you was to look at anything, well, it's a Chinese bank holiday today for one thing, so the volumes may be a little bit lighter through the markets in some places. But you've also got the uh, Canadian business outlook at one, uh, 3 30 pm. Whew, be, you'll be finished by then. Um, and if you really want to hang in there, the New Zealand dollar business confidence um, at 11 pm for those that uh, are either getting up early or just getting up in the morning back over there. Right, that's it for me. Have a great one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.